Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things fit. Where's the bicycle? Every time. Every time. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. Today, I am back in sunny, sunny London this evening at the Noel Coward Theatre to see 222, A Ghost Story. This is a brand new play that started previews last week, and I have been invited by Official London Theatre to come and see it before its press night. I am both terrified and intrigued. One thing you should know about me, I am not a big horror person. I am not even a small horror person. I really, I do not like being scared. I do not like spooky things. I only really like Halloween because I get to dress up in fancy outfits. I do not like spooky films. I do not like spooky plays. I've seen The Woman in Black. I sat front row, was not a fan. I mean, it was great, but just horrifying. So this is going to be an experience and I am legitimately concerned already. We'll see what happens. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, hey! I am back in my flat. It has been a couple hours since I saw this play. Normally when I come back and talk about these shows, it will be the next day. It is still the same night. A, because I thought, spooky ambiance. And B, I am still thinking about this play and I needed to talk about it. And very few people have seen it yet because we are still in early previews. So I am coming on here to talk to a camera about it and let you all know. Now, at the very end of this play, they tell you to keep the secrets, like they do in many other things, like in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, like with the mousetrap. They don't want you to spoil the ending or the plot of the particular story. So I am not going to be spoiling it on here. I might give you a few little details, but I'm not going to be spoiling the plot of the play if anyone was concerned. We're not about that, not on my channel. So because it's still in previews, and I don't generally like to review shows while they're in previews before they've had their official opening press night, I'm not gonna do a full review as such, but I am gonna let you know what I thought about it, just in a more informal sense. So I was quite apprehensive about going to see this one, and I don't know that it's something I necessarily would have booked. It's just not a genre that I would normally go out of my way to book. I'm all about the musicals and the revivals and the hard-hitting plays. I'm not normally about the sort of modern thriller type genre. But the lovely people at Official London Theatre did very kindly reach out to me and offer me tickets to go and see this play and I thought why not try something new, challenge myself as a theatre goer. Which is a great idea for anyone. Push yourself out of your comfort zone, or in my case, go and see a scary play, which is an active discomfort zone. I will see anything in the theatre, and I, I mean anything. I've seen, I have seen burlesque at the Edinburgh Fringe more times than I care to really remember. But scary things really are my weakness. I have seen The Woman in Black before from the first row, and that nearly destroyed me. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child was very nearly too scary for me, so that gives you a really good sense of where we are. I do not go see horror movies at the cinema. I do not watch them on Halloween. I watch Hocus Pocus and The Nightmare Before Christmas, and then I go to bed. So going into the theatre, just getting ready for this, I was so apprehensive and just so on edge the entire time, and just trying to focus on all the details. I was like studying the set, the beautiful set design, by the way, by Anna Fleischl. Fleischler? I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I was studying this set trying to work out where might someone pop up from or where might something fall from, just trying to prepare myself really and spoil any potential surprises for myself. The opening scene of the play is immediately very tense. There is a clock on stage and you realise that throughout the play the clock is going to move in real time and count down towards a certain time. You guessed it. 2.22. So the anticipation of that is very suspenseful. And then there's some jump scares outside of that. And as the play moved on, it sort of got less scary in a way. It didn't get less intense and less suspenseful, but it definitely became less scary. It became less about the scaring and more about sort of the intricacies of the plot. By the time I walked away from the theatre, I really wouldn't describe it as anything like a horror. It is less The Woman in Black, it is more The Mousetrap. It is more a sort of a thriller, mystery, ghost story. And there are jump scares and there are things that are going to get you, but they're not the scariest. And if I'm saying that, it's probably really not that scary. Essentially what it is, is they use the same kind of jump scare a lot, quite repeatedly. 
and they build tension very well and it sort of rises and falls with the use of comedy and the use of lighting and sound but they really only have this one way of scaring their audiences and theatre has such capabilities you know you, when you get people in a room and you get them immersed in this world and you really hold their attention you can do so much to an audience you can evoke such feelings and emotions if you really want to scare people there's really a lot of cleverer things you could do than what they deploy to scare audiences in this production so if you are going to be scared you might be disappointed by this because it's honestly not that scary. I, however, was thrilled because I don't like being scared that much. What I do love is unpacking more of a psychological thriller type situation. The cast are all very strong in this. Obviously, it is pop star Lily Allen's West End debut. She does very well. She gives a very confident performance. The characterization I felt was slightly one note, but it's not really her fault because she's playing this sort of necessary trope of horror ghost stories where she is the first hand witness and has to sort of live in that moment of anticipation and suspense so she doesn't get that much of a range of emotions to play. The personalities of the other three characters around her get to be much more interesting, get to have much more of a range and sort of share more about themselves. She doesn't really get to divulge that much really, it's the writing of her character that keeps it more sort of one note. Hadley Fraser is really brilliant as her husband, he is a more cynical character, he gives a really interesting performance, he's very funny, just very confident on stage as you would expect Hadley Fraser to be veteran of the West End that he is. Julia Chan gets to play a really fun character. She is an old friend of Hadley Fraser's character back from their university days, and she is quite vivacious. She drinks a lot. Very fun character. My favorite, however, and I think for a lot of the audience, was Jake Wood and he plays her boyfriend and he does bathrooms but also is kind of a spiritualist and has had some spiritual experiences himself and he is just a really brilliant source of comedy to diffuse the tension and just comes out with these hysterical unexpected lines that really it's midnight where are you driving to this loudly? The comedy lines he comes out with are sort of so incongruous and don't fit your idea of what this sort of cockney geezer character is going to be that I think that's where the comedy really comes from and he plays that really well. The script is really enjoyable, really fun, really watchable. It's very kind of Netflix miniseries-esque where you can just kind of watch this dialogue for a while. It's not necessarily the most theatrical and there were definitely moments where I wondered if it could have been more theatricalized, or if it was just a story that could be told just as well in a Netflix miniseries. It's one of those where the script is also cleverer than you realize because of late stage revelations in the plot. And that is, again, all I am going to say about that. I'm keeping the secrets. You won't get them out of me. Oh, except for this one part where <laughs> I'm joking, I'm not telling you anything else. The use of lighting was really great, the use of sound was really great. It's two hours run through with an interval. I will say the bar was impossible to visit in the interval. The queue was huge and not everyone who had joined the queue actually got a chance to order a drink. So if you want something from the bar, arrive early enough to go before the show. It was a really interesting audience, actually. It was quite a younger theatre crowd than you might usually see. It was a very lively, very engaged audience. You could tell a lot of people who weren't necessarily there together were talking to each other about what they thought was going on at different points in the show. I will say very smugly that I kind of worked out what was happening towards about halfway through the second act of the show. If you watch carefully for clues, there is enough there to piece together an understanding before it gets handed to you, but again, I'm not telling you anything more than that. I've already said too much. I think this is a really good play for like young couples on a date night. It gives you a lot to talk about afterwards is the reason why. Go on an early Tinder date, not the first date because that's weird, but like early Tinder date with someone you're getting to know. If you're someone who likes your serial killer podcasts, if you're someone who likes Black Mirror, if you're someone who likes Netflix miniseries of that kind of a vibe, Go and see this. Lots for you to enjoy. Lily Allen fans, she is in the entire thing. She does not leave the stage. She's very good in the show. I think you will enjoy. I can recommend this to a lot of people and certainly a lot of my friends who maybe aren't the normal theatre-y type who just like this sort of a thing. Very much not your usual night in the theatre and I think a lot of people might appreciate that. 
So go and check it out for yourself. 222, A Ghost Story at the Noel Coward Theatre. Let me know if you have any more questions about the show in the comments section down below and let me know what you thought of it if you have been to see it already. But remember, do not share any of the secrets from the show. Do not divulge any of the plot details. Do not tell people what happens. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel where there is plenty more Stagey content about all of your favorite upcoming West End shows. Also, if you would like to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where you get access to all sorts of exclusive perks. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. Contrary to what they say in the Ghostbusters song, I, I am in fact afraid of, of several ghosts. Several ghosts. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!